So back in 2014, I made a video about how to fix Skyrim mods that aren't working. The response was overwhelmingly positive, and it did better than any other video on my channel. I decided that since the quality was bad, and I had originally recorded on a really old notebook laptop, that I would try to remake it in 2015. The popularity of that video is now almost equal to the original, but I still wasn't satisfied with the quality of it, so I decided to make a third. This one, however, was a major failure, getting almost as many dislikes as likes, and several comments saying it didn't work. Looking back at it with the knowledge and experience I now have in 2018, I can see that there are several things I failed to address. So I'm going to remake this again and try my best to cover every possible reason that your mods may not be working. Now that that's out of the way, let's get right into it. SKSE, Skyrim Script Extender, is an essential set of files that must be installed to Skyrim by anyone who intends to mod Skyrim. To install Skyrim Script Extender, open your browser, type SKSE, look for the silverlock.org link, it should be at the top, look for installer, the current build is 1.7.3 and probably will never change because Skyrim has stopped updating a long time ago, so click installer, save the file, put it wherever the hell you want, Open your downloads when it's done, open the installer, click yes on admin rights. Right here is your Skyrim directory, if it doesn't find it, go ahead and hit browse and go to wherever your Skyrim is installed, click next, and then click install. In order to make sure that your Skyrim script extender installed correctly, go ahead and open up the console, type get skse version, all one word, and if it pops up with something that shows the skse version, then you have it installed and you are good to go. The Nexus Mod Manager is a tool created by Nexus themselves to manage mods from their site as well as mods you may find elsewhere. I'm not 100% sure, but from what I've heard, the Nexus Mod Manager is no longer being updated. Nexus has now teamed up with Tannin42, the creator of Mod Organizer, to create a new mod manager known as Vortex. This mod manager is only in its pre-alpha stages but is the main focus of Nexus as it will be their new software for organizing mods. But back to the original Nexus Mod Manager. This is not a bad option for organizing your mods, and it provides an easy to use interface that's great for beginners. Mod Organizer is a tool created by Tannin42 that gives modders much more control of their mods and how they are loaded into the game. There are six main differences between Mod Organizer and Nexus Mod Manager. Mod Organizer does not install mods directly to your game's data folder. Instead, it installs them to a separate folder and uses profiles to reference the needed mods for the current mod profile. This brings us into the next difference, which is profiles. You can have several different profiles for mods that allow you to have many different mod configurations, meaning one profile can use one set of mods while a different profile uses other mods or even some of the same. It's all up to your choosing. You can even separate your game saves to be profile specific so you don't get that annoying message when you start up the game that tells you mods are missing. It also allows you to sort the plugins of the mods as well as the mods themselves so you can control which mods overwrite which files from other mods. And to make it even better, sorting the plugins couldn't be any easier with the built-in loot load order optimization tool. This program sorts your plugins almost flawlessly with just a couple of clicks. And on top of that, installing and uninstalling mods couldn't be any easier. It's literally as simple as checking and unchecking the box next to the mod. And last, when you install a mod that doesn't have an installer, you can see the mod's directory to make sure the data folder path is set correctly and you can uncheck parts of the mod that you do not want to install. So if I haven't made it clear by now, you should probably switch to Mod Organizer if you currently aren't using it. But if you're comfortable with Nexus Mod Manager and you don't want to switch, that's totally fine. Just keep in mind, Mod Organizer gives you so much more control. Load order is essential in making all of your mods work together and to avoid conflicts between them. As I said before, loot is already built into Mod Organizer and is the best option for sorting plugins unless you know how to do it yourself. And don't worry if you use Nexus Mod Manager, you can still download, install, and use loot with it. For Mod Organizer users, you have control of the mods order as well as the plugins. On the left panel, you will see all of your mods and if you have several installed, you may see a lightning bolt with a minus or a plus on it. The mods load into the game from top to bottom, so if you have a mod with a plus, that means it is overriding files from a mod closer to the top of the list. This isn't a bad thing, it just means that some of the files are being replaced in the mod that's loaded first. 
If you don't want this to happen, you can simply move the overriding mod above the overwritten mod, which will mean that the overwritten mod's files will no longer be overwritten. Last we have Skyrim.ini. This file determines settings such as audio, camera, and controls. When I originally fixed my mods back in 2014, all I had to do was delete this file, then run the game. This recreated the file which by some black magic fixed the mods that weren't working. This is a really quick fix, however it's slightly different for Mod Organizer users. For those of you who don't use Skyrim Mod Organizer, go ahead and open up your Documents folder, go to My Games, go to Skyrim, and you'll see a Skyrim.ini file. Go ahead and copy that file, paste it, and you'll see skyrim.cop or skyrim-copy.ini. That will be your backup of the original file just in case anything goes wrong or it doesn't work. That .ini, if you go to view and check the box for file name extensions, then you'll be able to see the .ini. Originally, it'll just look like Skyrim. So go ahead, I always keep this checked just so you can see stuff like that because those details are always very important when it comes to doing stuff like this. So create that copy, which is the backup, delete this, and then you can go ahead and run the game. And whenever you run the game, it will automatically recreate that Skyrim.ini folder or file. You don't have to play the game at all. All you have to do is start it up and it should recreate that .ini file. Any mods you had loaded, that Skyrim.ini will reconfigure to work with those mods. I'm not exactly sure how it works or why, but all I know is it did work and it's a viable fix for any issues that you might be having. Specifically for me, the issue I was having was that some textures were not loading. This fixed it, so if it works for you, congratulations. Now for Mod Organizer users, it's quite a bit different. Whenever you install Mod Organizer for Skyrim, depends on where you installed it generally it will install to your Skyrim directory so go ahead and go to wherever you have your Skyrim installed for me it's the Steam folder because I got it through Steam Skyrim and then you'll see the mod organizer folder within there go ahead and go to profiles now whenever you're in mod organizer you have profiles which is different sets of mods you probably if you're using mod organizer you probably already know this so whichever profile your mods aren't working for Go ahead and go into this profiles folder, find that profile that, that mod, the mods aren't working for, so for example, say it's Nelly. Go ahead and find the Skyrim.ini, do the same thing we did with the uh, regular one, go ahead and make a copy of it, and then delete the original, and whenever you run Skyrim through the model organizer from that profile, it should recreate the Skyrim.ini within this profile, which should give you a working mod. If you made it this far and your mods still aren't working, leave me a comment and I will try to give you some more personalized help. If you have Discord and want one-on-one -on -one help by way of screen share or a call, my Discord server link will be in the description. Just join the server, send me a message, and let me know you need help. If this video helped you, make sure and leave a like, and don't forget to share this so other people with the same problem can get help too. Thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and peace!